In this video, we're going to talk about ionic compounds and how to write formulas for those ionic compounds when you have a polyatomic ion in the name. And we're going to specifically look at sodium sulfate. And one little trick here is if you see ITE or ATE in the name, you want to come and look at your common polyatomic ion list to see if that name is there. Although there are some exceptions such as ammonium or cyanide, if you see an ATE or ITE at the end, come check it out, check out this list. But let's look at sodium sulfate. So sodium, this is Na, it's actually a metal on our periodic table and we see sodium is Na. And it's in column one, so it'll have a plus one charge when it forms an ion. So you have Na plus one. Now we have sulfate and we see the ATE at the end. So what we wanna do is we wanna come and look at our common polyatomic ion list. And we see sulfate is SO4 with a minus two charge. So we put SO4 minus two. The next step is we have to take both of these and figure out how many sodiums and SO4s we need. So what we wanna do is we want this to equal zero. We take the charge plus one and minus two and we add these together and we get minus one. Your goal is for the compound to equal zero. Right now it doesn't. So I'm gonna add another Na plus one because I want this to equal zero and I change the equation. So I have plus one plus one minus two and I get zero. So I have the correct quantities of sodiums and sulfates. Next step is I need to count how many I have. So I have two Na's, one, two, and I have one sulfate. Then I need to write my formula. So I have Na subscript two, so I have two sodiums. Then I go ahead and I have one SO4, and I wanna make sure every time I write a formula that I put, I put the polyatomic ion in parentheses. You need to have parentheses around the polyatomic ion. You treat it as one item. And then you put the one on the outside. The reason you don't want to not include parentheses, so you want to include parentheses because if you do not, let's say I just put this one here, instead of saying I have one SO4, instead it says I have one S and 41 oxygens. So you don't want to do that. So please make sure don't forget those parentheses, especially if two, three, or four different polyatomic ions, um, you want to make sure to represent that. Next, one thing about when we talk about ones in our chemical formulas is that they disappear. So we can actually get rid of this parentheses and this one and just write it as SO4 purely because ones disappear and we assume there's a one SO4. In addition, there's one other way to go about writing your formulas. Once you find the charges, so sodium is Na plus one, sulfate is SO4 minus two. And what you can do is you can cross out those charges. So it is written like this. Then what you wanna do is if you're given a polyatomic ion, put a parentheses around it, just so you're good to go. Put a parentheses there. Then you cross the one over, and then you cross the two over, and you're given Na2, SO4, one. Then what you do is because ones, we get rid of our ones, we can get rid of the parentheses and the one in this case, and we're given the same exact answer, Na2SO4 and Na2SO4. 